Hi, I'm Bob Pryor, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Factor Game. And it is a game, and it has um, a winning, what we call a winning combination. And the Factor Game rules are this. We are given two numbers, a product number and a sum number. And our job is to find a factor pair of the product number that add, this is two numbers, that add to the sum number. And the correct factor pair is called the winning combination. The best way to learn this is by example. So let's try a few examples. Um, I'm going to start with a product number of 20 and a sum number of 9. Forgive my writing, not the best. So here's what we do. We take the number 20, and being a product means it's two things that are multiplied together. And we're going to take this and kind of take a look at its factor pairs. Now as a rule, as a habit anyway, I always start with 1, because we know that 1 is indeed a factor, so 1 times 20 is one factor pair of 20. 2 times 10 is another factor pair. 3 mm, is not a factor, uh, but 4 is. 4 times 5. And I could say 5 times 4 also, but really that's not necessary because 4 and 5, 5 and 4, it's the same factor pair, so we don't need those. The question though is, which of these factor pairs is going to add to 9? Well, I think you already know the answer is going to be the 4 and the 5. So 4 plus 5 equals 9, and that means we have our winning combination, which is 4 and 5. Let's look at another example. Product number 30. Sum number 13. Let's find out. Again, we're going to set up... Um, well, we can actually take it right from here. Looking for a factor pair of 30 that adds to 13. Sometimes you can see the factor pair right away. You might even realize, in this case, that it's 3 and 10. But assuming we don't see it right away, or if, you, if you're not sure, my recommendation always is to start with 1. 1 times 30. 2. Kind of work up. Do it in order so we don't skip anything. 2 times 15. 3 times 10. Now at this point we might recognize, yeah, that's the winning... Uh, combination 3 and 10 right there. If we didn't see it right away, we might continue and next we would write 5 and 6. We don't have to. I'll do it just because. But really, we're done at 3 and 10. So I'm going to write the winning combination 3 and 10. Now one thing that's you need to know about the factor game is that if you find a winning combination, that will be the only one. There never are two different winning combinations. Well, we could write it 10 and 3, but really that's the same. Let's look at another example. Product number, 18. Sum number, 10. When we look at factor of pairs of 18, I'm not sure which pair adds up to 10. But let's discuss. This is when we know that we need to start with 1. 1, 18. 2, 9. 3, and 6. Now I'm looking at that and I'm seeing, well, 2 plus 9, that's 11. Okay, close, but not the answer. Uh, not the sum that we're looking for. 
Uh, 3 plus 6 is 9, also not the sum, and I don't see any other factor pairs. So it turns out in this case that there actually is no winning combination. You can write none, or you could write no winning combination or no combination. This can happen. In other words, it's possible that the factor game has no winning combination. And here's an example of it. Before we look at another example, I want to point out that every product number and sum number that we've seen so far have been positive numbers, the 18 and the 10. We're now going to look at an example when the product number is positive, but the sum number is negative. Okay, so this time I'm choosing a product number of 15 and a sum number of negative 8. I have to think about this for a moment. When we find factor pairs of 15, which is a positive number, by the way, might even want to put a little plus sign to remind us that it's positive 15, that the two factor pairs, like when we start with the 1 and 15, for example, are actually going to both be negative. That's because they need to multiply together to get a positive number, but add together to get a negative. And just stop for the right there for a moment. I'll put a little plus sign in the parentheses. When we add these two numbers together, we get a negative 16. Yet when we multiply them, we get the positive 15. Well, this clearly is not the winning combination. It should right around the corner here. It is 3 and 5. Except it's not 3 and 5, it's actually what? Yeah, you were thinking ahead of me. Negative 3 and negative 5. And when we add those together, we do get negative 8, what we're looking for. So there's the winning combination. Got to make sure I write it correctly. So winning combination, negative 3 and negative 5. Let's look at another example similar to this. All right, this time I'm going to have 20 for the product number and negative 21 for the sum number. When we look at the factor pairs of 20, we start right away with 1 and 20. In fact, if we just, well, we need to negate both of them because to, in order to get a positive 20 here, they'll both be negative to add up to a negative number. And the very first number we choose, that's it. They add up to negative 21. So that's our winning combination. Negative 1 and negative 20. The next set of examples are all going to show us what happens when the product number is negative. So for our first example, I'm going to start with a product number of negative 10 and a sum number of 3. Now that sum number of 3, if you want, it's a positive 3, so we could put a plus sign there if that's helpful for you. You don't have to. But let's take a look at factor pairs of negative 10. We actually might first start with just the regular 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and that's the only set of factor pairs. But in order to get a negative product, one of the of each in the factor pair, one of the numbers has to be negative. We can start maybe by making the left side negative and the right side positive. With positive numbers, we don't have to write the plus sign, but sometimes that's helpful again. And we do see the pair that adds up to positive 3, and it's the negative 2 and positive 5. So that's the winning combination, negative 2 and 5. Next example. Let's try negative 12 and 7. By the way, um, if you ever, of course, you know, want to pause this and, and try to figure it out for yourself, you're certainly welcome to do that. I should have mentioned that earlier, and you knew that already anyway. Let's take a look at negative 12 as a product number and positive 7 
for the sum number, 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. So it looks like it's going to be 3 and 4. Um, do remember, though, that the product number is negative, so when we negate each on one of the sides and then add, we actually discover that none of these add up to 7. The first one adds up to 11, the second adds to 4, and the third pair adds to 1. So this actually is another situation where we have no winning combination. So again, I'll write the word none. There's no winning combination here. Well, as I said, that can happen. I don't think the rest of my examples happen that way, but let's just continue. Okay, this time negative 30, negative 1. So the product number is a negative 30, and the sum number is negative 1. Factor pairs of negative 30. There are a lot of them. I always start, as you know, with 1. So 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4, no, 5 times 6. And as we said before, we're going to negate one side, so I'll negate the left side. Now as I'm doing this, I'm going to recognize that each, the way I've organized it, uh, each of these sums, when I add these factor pairs together, we keep getting a positive number. It's a positive 29, here's a positive 13, uh, positive 7, and positive 1. Well, we're looking for negative 1, and we did find the positive 1, so at least we're on the right track, but since we want negative, what that means really is that we need to change those signs so that the, the larger number in this case is a negative 6 and the, and the positive 5, giving us the sum number of negative 1. That's the one we want. And so this is the winning combination right here. Sometimes I just circle the winning combination like I did just then. For now, I'm going to continue to write it down here as positive 5, or just 5, and negative 6. Next example. Okay, negative 24 for the product number, and negative 10 for the sum number. Looking at factor pairs of 24, again, I'm going to go through my list. 1 and 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, 6. Now, it's interesting about this one. If we aren't careful, we might fall in a trap of recognizing, hey, there's the 4 and the 6. They add up to 10. All I need to do is negate each one of them, negative 4 and negative 6, and we have the winning combination. Actually, that's not true. And the reason it's not true is because even though it's negative 4 plus negative 6 does add up to negative 10, that's true. What's not true is that they, their multiplication, their product, is positive 24, not the negative 24 that we need to have for this game. So that is not the winning combination. Instead, the winning combination is actually with the 2 and the 12. It looks like we need a positive 2 and a negative 12. And those, that pair right there, they multiply to get negative 24. They add to get negative 10. So that is the winning combination. 2 and negative 12. I mentioned earlier I could have written that as negative 12 and 2. I could, <clears throat> excuse me, Reverse the order. Anyway, this is the factory game. I hope you find this helpful. And I will let you know that this is a very important game for later in algebra when we learn about factoring trinomials. This game will come back into play. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.